And this one might cut you off guard for a minute. But you also need to, at times, commune with God in nature. And before, before you get, you know, let me explain what I mean by that. I'm not talking about some kind of mystical thing of becoming one and worshiping a tree or something. But I'm talking about that walking out this door, that you see that God is still working to sustain His creation. That God is still showering, his, with his, showering us with His love. We live in a country that is, well, a world that is full of sin, full of corruption. And God still showers us with His love. And when we look at creation, when we look at nature around us, we see how much God is still working to take care of us. At times, even as Christians, we do turn back to those purposes of the world. And one of those things that happens is hopelessness. The world can't offer us a promise that it can keep. The world can't give us purpose. I don't know what the exact stat statistics are, but I'm sure you could find them somewhere on the internet. But every year, there are hundreds of millions of people who commit suicide. And they do so because they don't have purpose in their life. They don't have God's purpose in their life. They don't, they don't know that there's something greater than this world. And so each day is another day for them. The days run together. It drones on. It's each just one more step. That's why God's plan for us. That's why God's plan not only for us, but for all the world is so important. Because that plan was not just reserved for those people who sit in church on Sunday morning. That plan was for all people of all times, of all places. God's plan of salvation was not something that came up short. It wasn't plan B. It wasn't plan C. It wasn't, well, we failed on the law, so we'll just throw in Jesus. Jesus was the plan. And no matter what happens in our life, we have a promise from God to take care of us. Man, I love it. It's so beautiful in Paul's words in Romans 8. And most of you know this verse. You probably could quote it with me along without even seeing it in front of you. But Romans 8.28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. And we have that promise of God working out the awful things in our life to His purpose. But it doesn't stop there. Most of us stop right there at that verse. Oh, awesome. God, but we just read a little further. For those God foreknew... For the, He also predestined. He chose before time to be conformed to the likeness of His Son, made holy, made righteous, that He might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those He predestined, He also called. Those He called, He also justified. Those He justified, He also glorified. God made us righteous. God made us perfect. It was nothing we did. It was no chance we had. The purpose in our life was, eh. but with God, we have purpose. With God, there is something to our lives. And it is not just about sitting here on Sunday morning. It's not just about hearing God's, God's Word personally, but it is carrying God's Word to the nations. Matthew 28, you guys could all say it with me. End of Matthew. No one? Okay. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He doesn't say sit down, take a nap, relax, get fed, get fat off the Word. He says go out there. Share the gospel. That is God's purpose for us. If you wonder what God's purpose is in your life, I know, I said I don't know exactly his, you know, what He has for that personal plan for you, but He does have that purpose for each and every one of us as His children, and that is to carry the gospel to the whole nation. That is to know the heart, His heart, and that is to serve Him, to love Him, to share that good news that Jesus died for all people. That is to leave this place, not as people who are empty, but people who are full, who are overflowing with the good news. And part of having that loving relationship with God, that living relationship with God, is knowing His heart. And God's heart is breaking. His heart is breaking for nation upon nation, people upon people, who are dying without the good news. God doesn't desire any person to die and go to hell. He desires all people to die and join Him in eternal righteousness. Knowing God's heart, we carry that gospel. We carry that message of love. And if you don't know how to do it, it's not just 
You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a teacher. You don't have to be someone who's an evangelist who can shout from the mountaintops. You can do it in small ways. Ways that you never expect. Helping someone at the grocery store and talking to them. Oh, why are you so kind? Because Jesus loves me and he loves you too. You know those people who stand on, I know I go to Food for Less on a regular basis. There's that island right in the middle of the road there. All of you know the people who stand there. But it's reaching out the window and even though you don't know what they're going to do with the dollar and saying, you know what, I don't know what you're going to do with this, but I know that Jesus has blessed me, that God has blessed me, that he has taken care of me so I can part with this. Or buying food for someone who's hungry. Even putting your arm on someone who has tears streaking down their face because they've lost someone they love. See, it's not just about the preaching, the teaching, the evangelizing. Certainly there are people in this congregation who have those talents, who have those abilities. But if you don't feel that is, then there's other ways. And if you don't know what God's talent is that He's using through you, well, there's a real easy way to find out. That is through prayer. That is through praying that God will open your eyes and open your heart to see what He has in mind. That is through praying that God will open the hearts and the minds of the people you come to. That they will receive you. That they will hear your gospel message. That is through praying that the Holy Spirit will be upon you. That He will strengthen you. That He will help you walk through those tough days to, bring, to tell people of His glory. That is praying that just a simple prayer. Lord, use me. Use me. Take my hand and lead me along life's way. God will. And most of the time it will be in ways that we can't even imagine. In ways that surprise us beyond belief. God will use us. How beautiful the message is of the gospel. How sad it is when it doesn't get proclaimed. How beautiful it is when all people not only hear our words, but see the love of Christ in our lives. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for choosing us. Before time, you have made us yours. You've called us before our parents knew us. You've chosen us, Lord, to be your instruments, to share your love. Lord, we pray that you would strengthen us, that you would instill in us faith that you are working. Lord, while our plans may fail, your plan never fails. Your plan of salvation through Christ will and cannot fail. No matter what Satan threw at it, Lord, you made it work. Lord, we pray that you would give us that strength the strength of Christ's death on the cross, but His resurrection to bring the gospel to all people. Help us, Lord, to bring that saving message. Help us, Lord, not to just keep it to ourselves, but to overflow with Your glory. Lord, use us. Use us to change the lives of others. May Your Holy Spirit be upon us that we may go forth, not on our own, but in Your perfect will. Lord, these things we pray. In your Son, Christ Jesus' precious and holy name, amen.